So what is vitamin C? What is it good for? How much vitamin C should I be eating? Where can I find vitamin C in my diet? And what can happen if my vitamin C levels are low? Vitamin C has been getting quite a lot of publicity these past few weeks. The shelves in my local pharmacy that were usually stocked full of vitamin C supplements are suddenly empty. And when I went shopping there recently, I literally saw trolleys full of orange juice being bought. So it's definitely um, something on the top of people's minds. So is this vitamin C flurry even justified? Let's explore what vitamin C actually is and let's take a look today at some of the many functions it has in our bodies. So let's get started. First of all, what is vitamin C? Well, vitamin C is a micronutrient, meaning that we need it only in small amounts. It's also known by a different name, L-ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin, which means it, we find it mostly in the water parts of food rather than in the fatty parts of food. And fun fact, but unlike many other animals, we actually, as humans, cannot make vitamin C in our body, so we must get it from our diet instead. So what does vitamin C do? Well, first of all, it's an antioxidant. So vitamin C is one of several nutrients that we can call an antioxidant. Now, what's that mean, you might ask? Well, it means that it helps to protect our cells from damage that is caused by free radicals. And free radicals are chemicals that are made when our bodies, for example, turn food into energy. Um, however, it can also be from exposure to free radicals from our environment, for example, air pollution, smoking, and the UV rays from the sun. Now, these free radicals then cause something that we call oxidative stress, which may damage different proteins, fatty tissues, and our DNA in our bodies. Vitamin C actually does not just act like an antioxidant, um, protecting our cells against this oxidative stress, but it's also been shown to make other antioxidants work better, such as vitamin E. Another thing vitamin C does, it helps to produce protein. So we also need vitamin C to make a protein called collagen, which is needed to help us build and repair tissues in our bodies. So another thing vitamin C does, is it helps us to absorb iron from plants. So vitamin C helps us to absorb a type of iron from plant foods called non-heme iron, which is usually less easy to absorb than the iron that we find in animal foods, which is called heme iron. Having a food high in vitamin C around the same time that you eat a plant source of iron, so for example, maybe having red peppers and tomatoes, which are vitamin C containing, in a salad that also contains dark leafy green veg, such as spinach. Um, it's been shown in studies that it increases how much of the iron you absorb. Vitamin C also helps with our immune systems. Uh, so vitamin C is needed in the various stages of the immune system, from keeping our skin healthy, to helping our immune system and our immune cells to work properly. Now, vitamin C has been researched in various conditions. Um, so because vitamin C acts as an antioxidant, for example, it's been considered in research as a possible nutrient that may help prevent conditions or treat conditions which are related to oxidative stress. These conditions include cancer, cardiovascular disease, macular degeneration and cataracts, and the common cold. So let's review what some of the evidence out there or what some of the research has concluded about the role of vitamin C in these conditions so far. So first, looking at vitamin C in cancer. Well, first of all, we have evidence to suggest that diets that are higher in fruits and vegetables are linked to a lower risk of certain types of cancer. Now, I had discussed this before in my video about the many benefits of fruits and veg on our health, and you can find the link for that video below as well. Because these foods are also higher in vitamin C and other antioxidants, researchers have wondered if taking even more vitamin C using supplements may help to reduce your risk of cancer further. Unfortunately, at this time, the results from most clinical trials show that supplementation of vitamin C offers very little to no benefit in protecting against cancer. Researchers think that this might be because most people actually already get enough vitamin C from their diet. And so we only see a very small increase in vitamin C levels in our bodies when we start taking supplements. Our bodies very carefully regulate how much vitamin C we store in our bodies. And so if we usually eat our recommended daily needs of vitamin C from our diet, our bodies will simply not absorb as much of the supplements, first of all, that we eat. And then we'll also get rid of much of the extra vitamin C that we do absorb through our urine. Looking at vitamin C in cardiovascular disease, and again, much like with the cancer risk, a diet high in fruit and veg has been linked to a lower risk of developing heart disease and stroke. However, studies looking at the effect of supplementing a diet with vitamin C again found very little benefit from this increase in vitamin C intake. This is again assuming that you do have enough or get enough vitamin C from your diet alone, which most, most people tend to do. Looking at vitamin C in age-related macular degeneration or AMD and cataracts, 
Well, current evidence does not show that taking a vitamin C supplement will help reduce your risk of developing AMD or cataracts. However, a small amount of research does suggest that a specific supplement containing high doses of various antioxidants may slow the progression of AMD for people who are at a very high risk of developing an advanced stage of this condition. Looking at then vitamin C and the common cold, because of course there's a lot of hype about using vitamin C at the moment as a supplement when it comes to our immune system. While for the general population, regular vitamin C supplements are not shown to reduce your chances of getting a cold, one subgroup of our population may see a benefit. People who do strenuous physical activity, and now the study looked at marathon runners, soldiers and skiers partaking in extreme physical activity and in cold environments, um, you may see a potential reduction in their chances of getting a cold when people are taking vitamin C supplements in these situations. For the general population, they did actually find that taking vitamin C supplements before getting a cold may reduce the length of time that you have your cold, but only by 8%. Now this effect is slightly better, um, higher for children who see about a 14% reduction in the length of time that they have a cold. And there may also be a slight reduction then in how severe your symptoms get when you take a vitamin C before you get your cold. Then looking at vitamin C and maybe gout and kidney stones. So while this is not related to the antioxidant properties of vitamin C, there is a small amount of evidence to show that increasing your vitamin C intake may reduce your risk of developing gout. However, there's also evidence to show that taking regular vitamin C supplements may increase your risk of developing kidney stones and gout and kidney stones are somewhat related. Um, so especially if you have had kidney stones before, we would recommend against taking vitamin C supplements. So as you can see with most conditions study, there is actually very little benefit seen when people were taking supplements of vitamin C. And this is likely because very few people are actually vitamin C deficient in the first place. Let's have a little look now at how much vitamin C we need and where we can get it from. So how much vitamin C do I need? Well, Irish guidelines recommend that adults need about 60 milligrams of vitamin C a day. The UK recommendations are actually slightly higher, rec recommending that women need about 75 milligrams and men need about 90 milligrams. And as we cannot store vitamin C in our bodies for very long, we do need to find a way to include it in our diet every day. Interestingly, the UK actually also suggests that you take an additional 35 milligrams a day if you're a smoker. And this is because smokers are more subjected to free radicals and so may benefit from additional vitamin C. Then looking at safe upper limits, so this is the maximum amount that we would recommend you take, and it tends to be recommended to stay below 2000 milligrams or two grams of vitamin C daily. So thankfully, most people meet their vitamin C requirements on an average day here in Ireland. Irish men eat an average of 114 milligrams of vitamin C and Irish women eat about 141 milligrams a day. So this is almost double your recommended daily need for vitamin C already. What happens though if I don't eat enough vitamin C? Now the typical condition you will find in people with vitamin C deficiency is known as scurvy. It was often seen in sailors actually up to the 18th century who went on long voyages with very little fresh fruit or vegetables on board. Back then they actually found that by bringing citrus fruits on board helped them to cure and prevent scurvy. Now, while they didn't know that it was exactly vitamin C that was helping them back then, it was one of the first known experiments in managing a nutritional deficiency. Typical signs of scurvy then are poor wound healing, fragile skin, all wounds may open up again, and you might see bleeding gums, teeth falling out, and even depression. It can take, however, up to a month of eating less than 10 milligrams a day of vitamin C to develop these symptoms of scurvy. Again, remember that most people in Ireland eat well over 100 milligrams a day. So thankfully, scurvy is quite rare nowadays in developed countries. However, it can still be found very occasionally in people who eat very limited diets. So while true vitamin deficiency is very rare, unfortunately, some groups are still at risk of vitamin C intakes that are below the recommended daily allowances. Now, this is not at deficiency level, but maybe at a level below what is considered to be best for your health. The groups of people that may be at risk of not eating the optimal amounts of vitamin C include smokers and passive smokers. So people who smoke are shown to have lower levels of vitamin C than non-smokers. Therefore, as I said earlier, in the UK, they have suggested that, they, that smokers need an additional 35 milligrams of vitamin C more than non-smokers. Unfortunately, even exposure to smoking through passive smoking has shown to have a vitamin C lowering effect. However, there's currently not enough evidence to recommend a specific vitamin C intake for this subgroup. Another group at risk are people with very limited food variety. 
So fruits and veg are usually the best sources of vitamin C. However, thankfully, many other foods also have small amounts. So eating a variety of foods should mean that most people will meet the recommended intakes of vitamin C. However, people who eat very little variety and have very low intakes of fruits and vegetables especially, may still be at risk of inadequate vitamin C intakes. People who may be most at risk could include, for example, the elderly, people with very poor appetites, people who abuse alcohol or drugs, people with mental illness, and at times children with very limited diets also. Some people with medical conditions may also be at risk of inadequate vitamin C levels. So for example, intestinal malabsorption may reduce the absorption of vitamin C from the gut. Some conditions may also increase the body's need for vitamin C, for example, cachexia or wound healing. We also see that low vitamin C levels are found in patients with end-stage kidney disease who are on hemodialysis, as the dialysis machine clears some of their blood of the vitamin C. Now, if you worry that you might fall into a group that is at risk of low vitamin C levels, it may be worth talking to a dietitian to see what you could do to either make sure you get enough vitamin C from your diet or maybe from supplements. So where can I find vitamin C in my diet? Now, in Ireland, we find that most people get their vitamin C, first of all, from fruit, then from veg and next from potatoes. Most fruit and veg are great sources of vitamin C. Foods especially high in vitamin C include citrus fruits, so your oranges and lemons red and green peppers and kiwi fruit. A mere half a cup full of red peppers contains more than your RDA for vitamin C already. Some foods and beverages are actually also fortified with vitamin C, but it will generally say it on the label if there is vitamin C added. Now be aware that the vitamin C content of foods may be reduced slightly by storing food for a long period of time and by cooking. So for example, if you boil your vegetables, you will be losing some of the vitamin C to the water. Remember, it's a water soluble vitamin. And for this reason, it may be better to either eat your fruit and veg raw or microwave or steam it. So is there any benefit or harm then to taking a vitamin C supplement? Well, based on evidence available, I would say that very few people would actually benefit from taking a vitamin C supplement. And this is because, again, the majority of people easily meet their recommended daily allowances for vitamin C already. And we did see in those studies that taking additional vitamin C on top of this showed very little increases in the amount of vitamin C stored in our bodies. Most of it will either just simply not be absorbed from the gut or will be peed out in our urine. However, if you fall into the groups that I mentioned earlier as being at risk of low vitamin C intakes, so for example, if you have a very limited diet or if you have a condition that may affect how much vitamin C you absorb or need, then it may be worth talking to your dietitian or your doctor about taking a supplement. Also, if you are an athlete, again, as I said earlier, the evidence does suggest that you may see a reduction in how often you get a cold if you take vitamin C as a supplement. Now, it may again be worth discussing this with your sports dietitian if this is something that you're interested to start. Thankfully, vitamin C supplements are generally considered safe for most people, up to a gram a day. Be aware, if you do take more than one gram of vitamin C a day, you may find that there have that there's some stomach pain, for example, or diarrhea or flatulence, normally gut effects. Um, these symptoms will usually go away when you do stop taking the supplement. And also note that there may be an interaction of vitamin C with some cancer treatments and potentially some heart medication. So it is normally recommended to tell your doctor and pharmacist if you are taking any over-the-counter supplements, not just vitamin C, any over-the-counter supplements, as they may be able to check if there are potential interactions with your condition or your medication. We also discussed earlier that there may be a slight increased risk of developing kidney stones if you're taking vitamin C, especially if you've had kidney stones in the past. And also a very small study did show a potential risk of taking two grams of vitamin C a day for people with severe chronic pancreatitis. So we do tend to recommend to avoid vitamin C supplementation in this group also. So just to summarize, Vitamin C is an important vitamin and antioxidant needed to maintain healthy tissues and a healthy immune system. We get vitamin C from a large variety of foods, mainly fruits, vegetables and the mighty potato. And in general, we easily meet our, easy, our recommended daily needs for vitamin C from our diet alone. The research to date shows that for most people, there is very little benefit to taking vitamin C supplements if you're already eating enough from your diet. So really, as with most other nutrient supplements, I would suggest that vitamin C supplements are like the sprinkles on a cake. Get your diet right first, build that solid base, the delicious cake or a healthy diet full of fruit and veg. And then do you still even need the sprinkles? I hope you found this video useful. Feel free to comment below with any questions. And if you like this video, then please let me know down there with a little thumbs up or a little heart um, and a little positive comment. 
For more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and click that little bell button on my channel page to get notified when my next video comes out. Thanks so much, guys. And all going well again in this mad world and situation we're in. I will try to see you again in two weeks time. Bye.